Okay, so this new concept is called elementary matrices. So the word elementary means that they're rather simple matrices. And here's how you build them. The idea is start with I, the identity matrix, and apply to I, so this is the notation for transform, that's a transformation arrow, apply to I a single row operation, this is the Greek letter R, that is called rho, and so if you apply to I a single row operation, you get a new matrix, and E is called an elementary matrix. So an elementary matrix is a matrix that can be obtained from I by applying a single row operation. So rho, again the Greek letter R, is written as R-H-O, stands for a row operation. a single row operation. And if E can be obtained from I by applying a single row operation, E is called elementary. Let's look at an example. Suppose you take a 2 by 2 square matrix for I, so you take 1, 0, 0, 1, and, well, what's the first type of row operations? We can say that we interchange row 1 with row 2. So we apply to I a single row operation, and it becomes 0, 1, 1, 0. And this is now E. This is an elementary matrix. Well, we could start with I. 1, 0, 0, 1, apply a different kind of row operation. Suppose we multiply row 2 by, say, negative 6, negative 6, row 2. Then the matrix becomes 1, 0, 0, negative 6. And this is, again, an elementary matrix. You could take the 3 by 3 identity matrix. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And apply our third type of row operation. Suppose we take row 1 and subtract from it 4, row 2. Let's apply this row operation. We are only changing row 1, so you can recopy row 2 and row 3, and then we do row 1 minus 4, row 2, so 1 minus 4 is 0, is 1, 0 minus 4 times 1 is negative 4, 0 minus 0, 0. And this is again a matrix is obtained from I by applying a single row operation. This matrix is called elementary. And that's it. The question is, well, what's special about these matrices? What makes them special is the following result. Let's call this a little theorem. So suppose you take any matrix A and you apply to A a single row operation, say rho, and you obtain a new matrix, say B. Right, so that's very simple. Apply this row operation to A and transform it to this new matrix B. What if you did something else instead? What if you took I apply to I the row operation, then you have just created an elementary matrix, say E. And if you multiply on the left A by E, so you get EA, well you may be able to guess what the end result is. The end result will be B. And that's the theorem. So it gives you two different ways of accomplishing the same result. Given a matrix and a row operation, you can apply the row operation directly onto the matrix to transform it into this new matrix B, or you can instead build the corresponding elementary matrix and then multiply A on the left by E and you get the same result. Let's consider an example of this, or at least two examples.
Suppose we take A to be a 2 by 3 matrix. So we'll go with 1, 9, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 5. And now let's apply to A a row operation. Let's say that we do row 2 minus 2 row 1. So row 2 minus 2 row 1. Well, we obtain the matrix B. Right? We've transformed A by this row operation. And let's see what the matrix becomes. We are only changing the second row. We can recopy the first. And now we do row 2 minus 2 row 1. So 4 minus 2, 2. Negative 1 minus 2 times 9 is negative 18. That's negative 19. 5 minus 2 times negative 2 is 5 plus 4, 9. OK, well now let's look at the second part of the theorem. Instead of applying row directly onto A, we will construct the elementary matrix. The question is, well, what's the size of I? Well, if you look at A, A is a 2 by 3. So if we multiply and you see the size of I is the size of E. So to have a defined multiplication here, I has to be the 2 by 2 identity matrix. So let's consider what we have now. Let's start with I. So 1, 0, 0, 1. Let's apply our row operation. Again, we are only changing row 2, so you can recopy row 1. And we are doing row 2 minus 2 row 1. So 0 minus 2 times 1 is negative 2. 1 minus 2 times 0 is 1 minus 0, which is 1. And now we have the corresponding elementary matrix E. And now let's compute E times 8. And check that we have this result in the end. So E times A. E is 1, 0, negative 2, 1. A is 1, 9, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 5. This is a 2 by 2. A is a 2 by 3. The multiplication is defined, and the new matrix will be, again, a 2 by 3. All right, well, here's our new matrix. Let's build the first row by multiplying every column of A by the first row of E, 1, 0. So this 1 will recopy the first row plus 0 of the second row, so we'll just get the first row. And you can see now with the second row, negative 2 plus 4, positive 2. Negative 18, negative 1, negative 19. Negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4, plus 1 times 5, 9. And we get the matrix P. So it works. Let's do one more example. What if our matrix A now was a 3 by 2 matrix? Four, six, five, negative one, eight, two. So now A is a 3 by 2. Let's apply a row operation to A. Let's say that we will swap row 1 with row 3. Well, we obtain now this new matrix B. We copy the second row, we're not changing it. And now we swap the first with the third row. So we get 8, 2, and 4, 6. Let's now construct B in a different way. The question is now, what is the size of i? Well, we want to compute 
E times A, and A is a 3 by 2 matrix. Now E will be the same size as I. To have a defined multiplication here, E must be a 3 by 3. And so I must be a 3 by 3 matrix. So I will be the 3 by 3 identity matrix. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And we now apply a row to this matrix to construct E. Well, what was row? It was the swapping of row 1 with row 3. So we'll get 0, 0, 1. The second row does not change. And we get 1, 0, 0. And that's E. And now let's compute E times A. And check that we get B. So here's our matrix E, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, whoops, 1, 0, 0, times A, 4, 6, 5, negative 1, 8, negative 8, positive 2. So again, E was a 3 by 3, A is a 3 by 2. The multiplication is defined, and the new matrix will be of size 3 by 2, the same as A. Now let's multiply. Let's build the first row of our new matrix. Let's, pick the let's fix the first row of E, and we'll get 0 plus 0 plus 8, 0 plus 0 plus 2, second row, 0 plus 5 plus 0, 5. 0 plus negative 1 plus 0, negative 1. And finally, 4 plus 0 plus 0, 4. 6 plus 0 plus 0, 6. And you see what happened to A is the first row became the third row, and the third row became the first row. So once again, we get the same result. And that is the main property of an elementary matrix.